Hello there. In today's video, we're going to discuss how to select particular weather elements to use in your data queries, whether you're downloading the data or using it within the weather API. So let's head over to the query builder and we can discuss what we mean. So when we say a weather element in the Visual Crossing data set, we discuss, we're discussing what in a tabular format would be each of these individual columns. So for example, date to date time, max temperature, temp min, temp, feels like, etc. are all what we call weather elements. So depending on the format that you get, whether it's CSV or tabular or JSON, these will either be properties within the, say, JSON format or a column data. Now, each of these can be selected. So you can see that in the default query, we we return a number of queries ranging from temperature, obviously the date and time, uh, information about the rainfall, snow, wind information, solid energy, and an overall description and icon field. So it's sort of a generic set that we have selected as the most commonly used elements. Now you can select particular elements and you can do this for a number of reasons. One, if you don't need a set of elements, then eliminating them from your download will increase your query speed or your download speed. Um, in addition, there are some more advanced elements that we don't include by default because we uh, they're either part of a separate license package or we don't see them used in common, common usage. Therefore, you can actually select those manually and add those to your query. So let's look in how we do that within this query builder here. So we can see at the top there is a uh, set of options to uh, change our elements. So if I click on elements, it's going to pop up the overall query builder. And this query builder gives me the option to choose particular elements. So by default, you can see everything's gray, which indicates the default element. Let's clear this and then we'll just start off and pick our own. So we're going to pick the type date time so we at least get the, the date or the, the hour within the query. And then we're going to just restrict it to three maximum temperature, minimum temperature and temperature. When I press OK, now we can see that the query is updated and we're just getting those four query, four columns that we've selected, date, time and the three temperature. And if we switch over to the hourly data set, we only get the one because maximum and minimum temperature don't apply at the hourly level. If we then switch over to the API uh, and then let's switch it to CSV just for clarity and copy the daily URL. Let's put that into a browser here. And you can see that in this case, we get exactly the same. We're only getting the date time and the three temperature columns. If we look at the query, the elements parameter is how this is being sent. So it's a list of the elements that you want to see in the query. So this makes it very easy to simplify your data, reduce the amount of information you're pulling back if you don't need additional data, and just also select different columns. So let's now add some into here, some additional columns that we don't get by default. So we have various data sets, things like degree days, um, energy elements, wind and solar and agriculture elements. So let's add some degree days into here. So degree days are a way of either communicating how warm or cold it's been for um, say heating a building, cooling a building, or growing crops or plants in, in farming and agriculture. So let's use just a basic degree days selection here and we'll get an idea of what that means. If we switch back now to um, the grid view, we can see now we have the degree days columns has been added to the query. And I can do that for other elements as well. So for example, if I wanted to add some more advanced solar information, such as what's called the direct normal radiation, uh, diffuse uh, and horizontal, and also maybe the sun elevation, I can add that into my query. And now we get those additional elements. So it's very easy to add these. Um, you can do that either here in the query builder. You can also go and do it in the API as we've discussed. And we would encourage you to look in the API documentation, which you can find here under the documentation. The API documentation also tells you how you can add and remove individual elements from a, from a set. So you start with the default and say you want to add some agriculture. You can use plus and minuses to modify that elements query rather than listing them all out. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments below and please subscribe to the channel so that you'll get alerted when we add new videos.